November 6, 2016, 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdained them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage, because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men, with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord, that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, 
those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise even, Ma even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. November 6th, the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from 2 Maccabees 7, 1-2 and 9-14. Now 2 Maccabees is one of those books that doesn't appear in the Jewish or the Protestant canon because it was written only in Greek, probably in the late 2nd century BC because the events that it describes occurred around 175 BC under the persecution of Antiochus Epiphanes. He was the ruler of the Syrian the Seleucid Empire, and he persecuted Jews for their Jewish faith. In this passage, we hear about a mother who has seven sons, and each of them is put to death for giving witness to God, being faithful to the law of Israel. And finally, at the end, the woman is put to death. Throughout this awful process, a mother having to watch seven of her children being killed, she exhorts them to faithfulness, because she believes in the resurrection of the dead. Already, at the beginning of November, we're receiving readings that talk about the end of the world, the final judgment, the resurrection from the dead, because remember, November is the month of the dead. This is a clear profession of faith in the idea of the resurrection, that when we die, we don't go to Sheol, which is a type of holding tank for the good, the bad, the indifferent, but rather, if we hold on to God, then we will receive a reward. We will be raised from the dead body and soul. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians 2, 16-3-5. In this reading, Paul encourages the people to hold on to Christ, to be faithful, and he encourages them to pray for him so that he too might be delivered from perverse and wicked people. Now, delivered from them doesn't necessarily mean that he'll survive their persecution. He wants to hold on to Christ. He wants to have the love of Christ in his heart. He wants to practice endurance. And endurance is very often difficult. I had a friend once who was reading a biography of a martyr who died at 12 years old. And she got a little angry and she says, yeah, it's easy to be a saint when you're 12 years old. Try it when you're 74. That very often we have to hold on to Christ in the long run. We have to be patient, even patient with ourselves. And that's what this reading is all about. The Gospel is from Luke 20, 27 to 38. Jesus is questioned by the Sadducees. And remember, the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. They have a rather traditional, a rather conservative approach to the faith. And since the resurrection of the dead is not mentioned in the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, they don't believe in it. And so they challenge Jesus on those grounds. They talk about a man who had a wife and he died without having children. Now the Leverite marriage, a custom in Israel, says he, that woman has to marry the next of kin so that that second man will have a child who will be named after the deceased brother or cousin. In this case, brother, there are seven brothers, 
All seven married this woman and none of them had children. So the question is, who does she belong to in the resurrection of the dead? Notice, who does she belong to? And Jesus' response, it's not like that in heaven. We don't belong to anyone. We're like angels. Now, angels doesn't mean that we don't have bodies. Remember, we'll have a resurrected body. But angels means that our love is not limited. It's not exclusive. We can love everybody with the same kind of love. And besides that, Jesus gives the example of a scriptural interpretation that Moses hears that God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, by the time that Moses hears that, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are already dead. And Jesus says, well, God's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Therefore, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must still be living in some way. So, Jesus, using a rabbinic interpretation, this would be called a midrash, that's a rabbinic technique that the rabbis used, is able to confound the rabbis and the Sadducees, able to show them that according to their own interpretation, they should realize that there's a resurrection of the dead. And may God bless us.